Starting with this topic uh, in reference to density and pressure, most of the things are carried from more levels, but uh, new things will be added in this topic in terms of A level. So we need to understand what is density, and we know that uh, density is equal to mass over volume, and uh, density is equal to mass over volume. Uh, there are two units in the syllabus. The first one is kg per meter cube, and the second one is grams per centimeter cube. You should be able to convert amongst uh, both of them. You should learn that. Uh, the second one is define and use pressure. So we know that pressure is equal to force per unit area. In base units, this will become Newton per meter square. And in combined units or SI units, this will become Pascals. Uh, for solids, it is uh, force over area. For liquids, it is sometimes rho GH. And for gases, it is P1. P1 equals to P2, P2. If you want to learn more about this formula, then you'll have to go check out the video of uh, my O-level syllabus that uh, actually derives this formula in terms of gas pressure. But since it is uh, not mentioned in the syllabus in this way, or in A-levels at least, I'm not going to explore this, and uh, I, just, I will just skip towards this mentioned in syllabus, the topics that are mentioned in the syllabus. Okay, so the second uh, we have done with the first two topics, the third one is derived from the definition of density and pressure, the hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is basically the pressure generated by water when it is stationary, when it is not moving. What happens when the water is moving? That goes towards Bernoulli's equations. Uh, that are not a part of this course. So hydrostatic pressure, let's see how it is uh, formed. So we know that uh, the pressure of a liquid is, or pressure in general, is force per unit area. In this case, the pressure is being caused by the weight of the water that is present inside this container, right? So that's, that will be mg. The weight of the water will be mg. Now, we need to understand the cross-sectional area over here as well. So what is this area? This is this cross-sectional area. Either you can visualize it from the top or you can visualize it from the base. It does not matter. This is the cross-sectional area. Although for a cylinder, the cross-sectional area generally is given by pi r squared. But we're not going to put pi r squared over here so that uh, we don't further complicate the situation. We don't need to do that. So this is pi r squared. So I'm going to keep area as A, but uh, to replace mass of this liquid that is inside the container, we need to understand that uh, density is equal to mass over volume. And if I take volume to the other side, this will become mass equals to density multiplied by volume. So I'm going to replace uh, density multiplied by volume in this situation. So this will look like density multiplied by volume multiplied by G divided by A. And in simple mathematics, we understand that uh, if you want to find out the volume of the liquid that is inside the container, what we can simply do for the cylinder at least is pi r squared multiplied by H. Now we understand that pi r squared is basically the cross-sectional area, so I'm going to replace A in that place. And height is actually this H that the container has, whatever height the container has of the liquid. So this will be H. So I replace uh, AH in place of V in this formula that we've just derived over here. So what I get is D dot A dot V dot, uh, sorry, not V, but uh, H. So H multiplied by G divided by A. Now we can see that A will get cancelled out and we are left with density into G into height. Now let's replace this with familiar, familiar uh, symbols that we've done. So this is the pressure of liquid. That becomes pressure of liquid equals to density is replaced with the symbol rho. That is very common. Multiplied by G, gravitational attraction, multiplied by H, which is height. Now I will recommend you, don't think about this as height. Think about this as depth. Uh, this will be put, of course, the standard units will be kg per meter cube and uh, 9.8 per new, uh, newtons per kg. And uh, this will be in meters. These things are understood now. So, for example, if this total height was given to you as 10 meters, and the examiner would ask you to find out the value of liquid pressure at this point, which is, let's say, 3 meters above the base, then students would generally do is they put H as 3, which will be wrong. Why? Because we need to consider the depth. And depth is always taken from the top up to the point of pressure which is required. So this H, which is depth, in this case will become 7. So if I had to calculate the pressure at this point or at this level, then I would have done rho, g, and multiply this with 7. And of course, in the question, density and gravitational attraction are given, so that's not a problem to solve this. Moving on to uh, the barometer. So barometer is also part of some questions that I've seen. Right, so how to visualize this? Again, the concept and idea is similar. This upper top section of this uh, barometer has uh, vacuum in it. 
there is no pressure over here so there is no pressure being exerted on top of the liquid the only pressure exerted in the system is from the outside which is on the top of the liquid base that is on the outside and it is actually trying to hold back this liquid that is inside the tube from coming it out it is preventing that liquid from coming out so what we generally say is that the liquid pressure from this point onwards this whole height this liquid pressure is actually equal to the pressure of atmosphere because the atmosphere is holding it back the atmosphere is preventing it from coming out so we know that the pressure of liquid is rho g h and that is the pressure of atmosphere now at the current situation if this is in equilibrium so what we do is we put in the height we know the density of the liquid we know the value of gravitational attraction and we find out the value of atmospheric pressure if you use mercury for this which they have used in this situation mercury has a very high density which is approximately 13600 kg per meter cube which is a very high value we are doing that deliberately so that if the rho is high then the value of h will be small to give us the atmospheric pressure which comes out as 1 into 10 to the power 5 pascal so you should remember this value this is generally not given in the question and the examiner assumes you know this okay all right so moving on to this uh, scenario this is uh, the manometer used to find out the gas pressure now first we need to understand how the liquid will behave okay so in this situation the system is balanced in the first case the system system is balanced on on both sides we can see that uh, there is an availability of atmospheric pressure on the open end now keep an eye on this word open end means that it is exposed to the atmosphere so there is an atmospheric pressure on both sides which is of course 1 into 10 to the power 5 pascals on both sides which means that there is nothing extra on any side of the column so the liquid level has settled down at this at this uh, point of uh, intersection you can say a, a common point on both sides okay now what happens if the gas pressure or let's say the pressure on one side is higher than the pressure on the other side you can do this artificially and you can also do this by connecting it to the gas pressure or a supply of gas uh, that is available for example now we know that uh, in this scenario let's say we have connected an unknown source of gas pressure on this side right so we understand that on this height of the liquid on this part of the liquid we can observe that there will be gas pressure being exerted why because the molecules are moving constantly and they are hitting on the liquid surface so they will be transmitting pressure as well and on the other side we can see that this is an open end so we have an atmospheric pressure now the confusion starts that uh, from this point that what is this extra height of liquid going to do and we need to understand that if we remove how to visualize this if we remove both pressures from both sides what will happen to the liquid the liquid will go back to this equilibrium position the liquid will go back to the equilibrium position right so what's going to happen is that this liquid that is on this side which is extra which has risen because of this gas pressure will actually try to fall downwards if it has to go back to this equilibrium position right so since this liquid pressure is moving downwards or exerted pressure downwards we can say it is helping or it is in the same line of action as the atmospheric pressure so what's happening how to make this equation we can say that the gas pressure is actually balanced by or is in equilibrium by or is being held back by the combined effort of the atmospheric pressure and the liquid pressure that is highlighted in blue so to write down the liquid pressure what i'm going to do i'm going to write down rho g h now what is this h this h is this height difference which in this case is mentioned as 10 cm so i will write this down as 10 divided by 100 why 100 because we want to convert centimeters to meters now notice that this liquid along with the atmospheric pressure because they are both in the same direction are trying to stop this dominance of gas pressure which is on the other side that is how you get this equation now the main target of this system is to find out the gas pressure so what the examiner will do we will give you these values and you can find the gas pressure another case in this case what can happen is what if the gas pressure in this situation what if the gas pressure is generally low than the atmospheric pressure in this case the atmospheric pressure was less than the gas pressure so the gas pressure dominated pushed the liquid downwards and it risen it has risen from the other side over here we can see that the liquid rises on the side of the gas pressure which means that the gas pressure is lower than the atmospheric pressure so the idea will remain the same so what's happening in this case is that if you allow this extra liquid that is highlighted in green now if you allow this liquid to move freely if these pressures were absent the atmospheric and gas pressure this liquid will try to fall downwards right and why is it moving downwards because it wants to go back to this position when the liquid is balanced on both sides even in this case what's happening the liquid exerting pressure on both sides since it is equal in height 
for rho g h it's equal equal in depth in on both sides that's why the liquid devil stabilizes at one point okay so over here we can see that uh, we have gas pressure trying to push back on this liquid plus we have the pressure of the liquid trying to force its way downwards and it is being driven by or you can say it is being balanced by the gas pressure the atmospheric pressure available on the other side so from the center we can make the equation that on the left hand side we have only one factor helping the atmospheric pressure and on the other side we have two factors trying to hold it back so this becomes pressure of gas plus rho g h again we bring back to the point that the target of this question is to find out the gas pressure so we take rho g h on the other side we get gas pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure minus rho g h and of course h will be the difference of height from both sides because that is the extra liquid on the other side that is causing the pressure so only that pressure is contributing or is helping in this situation then we have okay so we have done uh, the first three points we've dri uh, driven the formula for rho g h as well we know how to use rho g h as well and uh, the main thing to remember here is that we have to keep an eye on depth not height but depth then we have to understand the difference of hydro hydrostatic pressure what it causes and then we have to understand up thrust and archimedes principle so for that we have to derive this one equation again so what happens in this case is that uh, let's say we submerged we submerge a solid object in the liquid okay so there is going to be h1 a height at the top and then there is going to be h2 height at the bottom okay and if we draw this completely then we have a certain area at the top and we have a certain area at the bottom as well so the liquid is going to exert pressure on the top and the liquid is also exerting pressure from the bottom as well due to this height h2 so if we want to find out the pressure differential the difference of pressure at the top and the bottom what we can say is that this is going to be pressure at the top right so this will be rho g but i will use h1 which is the height from the top of the liquid to the top of the box and then we have the pressure at the bottom which will be calculated as rho g but h2 which i can see over this point now we know that uh, h2 is greater than h1 now since rho and g are equal they are equal so the only thing we can uh, deduce from this is that the pressure at the bottom or the pressure at the base will be greater than the pressure at the top now since the pressure at the base is higher than the pressure at the top we see that the pressure is exerted from a high pressure region towards a low pressure region so there will be a pressure there will be a force from lower side towards the upward side which is known as the up thrust and this is generally called as the buoyant force the force that is responsible for uh, making sure that the object floats or the object does not sink now it has to be greater than the weight of course if the weight is greater of the object then it will sink if it is less than the buoyant force then it will float now over here let's derive for the up thrust now we know that pressure and up thrust because up thrust is a force we need to make sure that we make force the subject of the formula which is going to be in this way so we take area on the other side what do we get we get force is equal to pressure multiplied by cross section area now what pressure is this this is actually the difference of pressure at the top and the bottom for this object so the force actually opens up as pressure at the bottom minus pressure at the top into cross sectional area so this becomes f equals to change in pressure multiplied by cross sectional area right and we have done pressure of liquid as rho g h so let's replace rho g h in this situation so we have rho g h multiplied by cross sectional area and if i go back to this derivation of the hydrostatic pressure that we have done we know that height multiplied by cross sectional area is actually volume right so if we go back to this situation again we have cross sectional area of this block which is at the base right we have the height or the difference of height because this was change in pressure so this is the change in height we have this change in height if we multiply this change in height with the cross sectional area we are getting the volume so this up thrust actually comes down as rho g v if we go back to the syllabus we realize that we find this formula as the sixth point which is rho g v archimedes principle that how this up thrust is actually acting so up thrust is acting because of the pressure differential of bottom and top and what is this volume of v now notice this that this volume of v is referred as two things first it is the volume of the object volume of the object that you try to sink and second it is another aspect is volume of the displaced liquid 
displaced liquid because most definitely if you put in an object let's say if you put in an object in the system the liquid will overflow and the liquid that has overflown is actually or is going to have some mass as well right so whatever volume that you've displaced over here will be the volume that is going to be collected on the other side or is going to overflow at least okay and another way to observe this is that whether if this is going to sink or is if this is going to float is to just compare densities which is of course a manifestation of this up thrust as well so if the density of the solid or the object that you're sinking is greater than the density of the liquid then the solid will sink whoever dominates if the density of the solid is less than the density of the liquid then the object will float and the physical manifestation or the reason behind this is that there is a comparison of mass of both things now if you put in let's say 6 kg of mass of another density for example of a different density and when you place it inside the liquid the volume be advised that the volume inside this liquid that is actually going to be displaced which is going to be exactly the same volume as this one if this volume of water produces a certain mass and if this mass is less than the mass of this object then most definitely it will sink why because this object is actually more massive in the same space or in the same volume as the volume of water that was displaced so if the volume of or if the mass of the water is less then most definitely it will sink it will not be able to hold back so notice that over here the same volume of solid is actually 6 kg and the same volume of liquid is actually 2 kg because of the difference of densities so the 2 kg water can only support or only hold back 2 kg of substance but since the mass of this object is much much higher than 2 kg it will most definitely sink right so up thrust archimedes principle bio and force they are all linked in this way this is basically a tussle or a fight or a difference of mass it all comes down to the difference of mass for the same volume right and uh, one more thing that always remember that up thrust will always be in the upper direction the weight will always be in the downward direction it depends on two situations whether the object is moving up or down so if let's say the object is moving upwards that would mean that the up thrust is upwards weight is downwards and the drag will also be downwards why because the object is moving upwards drag is always opposite to the direction of motion if the object is moving down up thrust remains up weight remains down but the drag will be in the upwards direction why the object is moving downwards drag is opposite okay so in this scenario for example if it is moving at a constant speed then the up thrust most definitely is equal to weight plus drag if it is accelerating upwards then that means up thrust is greater than the weight plus drag similarly on the other hand if it is moving at a constant speed downwards then drag plus up thrust are equal to the weight and if it is accelerating downwards then most definitely weight is much greater the downward force is much greater than the drag plus the up thrust whatever they can hold back whatever they can provide to stop this from happening okay all right <clears throat> now we start with questions questions are always driven from uh, the syllabus idea of course so let's look at the question it tells you which of the following pressure equal to the up thrust on the block the pressure at top pressure at bottom and we've just driven this that if you want to find out the pressure of the up thrust then you have to multiply pressure with cross section area the difference of pressure the difference of pressure will be found by pressure at bottom minus pressure at top and then multiplied by cross section area simply so it will be option c in this scenario if he had asked you about the resultant force then it could have been option a and b depending upon if the object is moving up or down uh, it would be minus if the object is moving upwards because the up thrust is upwards weight is downwards and if it would be moving downwards then most definitely uh, they both will be moving they both will be considered down. actually this equation is not possible up thrust and weight will not be added because they are always going to be opposite in direction this is an impossible equation okay question number 21 now this is a very common question and where this question actually originates from in the syllabus this is actually point number one that we know what density is so be advised how to solve such questions don't worry we'll get to that so it tells you what is the density of the liquid mixture there is one density rho the other one is two rho they have equal volumes or you can say that the volumes are mixed but they are not uh, they are not changing in volume right so how do you get by this problem so we have to understand the concept of uh, average density so the average density formula will be equal to total mass divided by total volume 
Now we know that the formula of density is equal to mass over volume. And we want to find volume, then we'll have to do volume divided is equal to mass over density. So the total mass in this situation, he says, that their equal masses are mixed. So I'm going to assume mass plus mass. 2m for both of the liquids because they are equal masses and then divided by the total volume. So the volume of the first liquid will be mass divided by rho and the volume of the second liquid will be, I'm using this equation, okay? So mass divided by 2 rho. So this equation will look like this. So mass divided by rho plus mass divided by 2 rho. Be advised, I'm using this formula for volume because we don't have it right now, okay? So when you simplify this, again, it's now your part. It's your job to do the algebra. So this becomes 2m divided by pm divided by, uh, just look at this. This will be 2m divided by 2 rho. Okay. Now this rho is going to go up. What we are left with is 2 rho multiplied by 2m divided by 3m. Okay. So this will get cancelled out as this way. M cancels out with M. We are left with the 4 rho divided by 3, which is option A. Okay, so if you're getting confused about this, how to do this, but at least you understand that what the equation will be, but you want to avoid the algebra, let me show you how this is done on the calculator and how you can bypass all of this LCM and th these things and just get it done with the calculator much more quickly. Let's look at that. Okay, so let's uh, quickly see this, how to do this. So you add the fraction button. For this m and m, you add 1 plus 1 divided by, you need two fractions now, so press, press fraction and then go to the other side to edit this equation plus add another fraction and then just edit them. So this one will be again 1 in place of this m, then we add another 1 because there is no other variable with row, then 1 and then divided by 2. Notice that I have added 2 for this row, for this one, okay? So what do we get at this point now? Press equals to, you'll get 4 by 3, which is our answer. Okay, so I hope that this is clear now, how to use calculator for this. We move on to this question, and this question originates from uh, this idea, which we just explored over here. Okay, so we are going to explore, we're going to use that again. Uh, all right, so he tells me that there is going to be a difference of density. Now he wants you to find out the difference of density or the density on both sides. So we can understand very clearly that on this side, we have this liquid pressure, which will be rho gh. And on this side, we have liquid pressure, which will be rho g h. Now, let's add variables in this situation. So, this is rho g, uh, density of liquid uh, P, and this is density of liquid Q. And the value of h for this will be the total depth or the total height, which will be 2x. So, this becomes rho P g into 2x. And this becomes rho Q g into x, because this height, we can see, is only x from the side of the P mentioned over there. So let's equate both of them because if the pressure is equal, only then we can attain the equilibrium position. So both pressures are equal. So pressure of P, liquid P, is equal to pressure of liquid Q. So this becomes rho P G 2X is equal to rho Q G into X. Simple height, okay? So when you cancel this out or simplify this, this becomes X cancels out, G cancels out, we are left with. Now, since we want density of P in the numerator and Q in denominator, I will bring this over there. So this becomes rho P divided by rho Q. And this two goes to the other side. So we are left with one over two. So this becomes option A. This was mathematical process. The other way or logical way would be that if uh, Q is holding back this much P, then most definitely uh, P or the density of Q must be greater than the density of P. And in this case, it must be two times greater because it can balance out the same pressure at half the height. You can say x by 2 or 2x by 2, half the height of P. So most definitely, it must be twice as more dense than Q, uh, than P. Okay. So this is another way to visualize this quickly. Now, this is one of the questions that is going to create a lot of trouble for you. Uh, we need to visualize this first and then go ahead with the answer and how to solve this. He asks you this question. In this question, he tells you that the mass of this one single atom is this much and the density of this uh, object is this and the density is generally uniform it doesn't matter this question is basically from chemistry in terms of uh, atomic sizes atomic densities this is actually actually inclined towards that but since it's given in physics we have to solve it and understand it let's do how to do that he says what is the distance between the two adjacent atoms so he's asking you about this now it's a tricky pr problem it's a tricky question what's actually happening is that if you zoom in for this one single block 
if you visualize this one single block over here, there is only a certain part of this cube or a certain part of this atom that is actually part of this cube. Now, to visualize this better, let me show you this visualization. Notice what's happening in this point. At every corner, we can see that it's not the full circle as a part of the cube. It's only one eighth of that part. Okay. So, this is actually only, you can say, one fourth, not one eighth, but one fourth of the part of the cube is actually part of this circle. So, what he has done, he says, or the visualization will become that uh, instead of these objects in the corner, if you add all of them together, if you add all of these together, you will get the cube, you will get the uh, sphere at the center. Okay. Although the sphere at the center does not exist, he only tries to tell you that if you add all of these objects on the corner, all of these objects at the corner, you will end up at the atom inside this cube. So, what it means, it means that one cubic volume, one cubic volume does not possess this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <clears throat> it does not possess eight atoms, rather it possesses this one atom in eight pieces that are actually on the corner of each side, which are, I think, easily visualizable at this point, right? So, what do we come down to? We come down to this idea that this one cube, if I let this to be x, what do we come down to? So, the volume becomes, volume becomes x cube. And the density is already given to so the density is equal to mass over volume. We want to find the volume because we want to find the distance. So this becomes 9 point, so 9.2 into 10 raised to power 3 equals to mass of one atom only because we figured out that this is going to be on each corner. There is only a certain part of this atom. Now there are going to be eight corners. So if you understand that this is going to be eight corners combined will make you the sphere at the center, which is represented <clears throat> much more clearly at this point. So you come down to just the mass of one atom only, okay, in a volume of x cube. So this becomes uh, density is equal to mass, which is only for one atom, 3.5, 10 to the power minus 25 divided by volume, which is, of course, x cube. So x cube comes out as a very large answer, okay. This comes down as 3.8 power minus 29. So this is 3.8 power 10 to the power minus 29 a meter cube. Now, since you're considering this as a uniform cube, what you're supposed to do is take the under root on the other side to find the length or the side of just one side or one dimension. Okay. So this x comes out as 3.36 into 10 to the power minus 10 meters, which is your answer C. Now, let's see. What we did was we are just considering the atoms on the edges. How does that equate to the distance between the atoms? To understand that, we have come down to this visualization. So what we've done is we've found that the distance between the edges of the imaginary cube that has eight atoms or eight part of the atoms on the sides, we have just visualized it this way. So this comes out as 3.3, I think 3.36, yes. So let's ignore the minus 10. So this is 3.36 and this is also 3.36. So, if we assume that the, they are uniformly distributed, the solid is uniformly distributed throughout the structure, what should it come down to? So, this atom should be exactly in the middle of this length. So, this comes out as 1.68 on both sides. So, this is 1.68 if you divide this by 2. And this is again going to be 1.68. <clears throat> Similar for this atom, this is going to be 1.68 and this will be 1.68 as well. And if you notice... This distance now, if you calculate this distance, that is actually from this point to this point. So what does that become? That becomes 1.68 plus 1.68, which is going to be equal to 3.36 again, which is the distance from edge to edge of the cube. So basically what's happening is that he is actually confusing you that the atoms are given on the edges, but if you combine their extreme parts, if you combine all of their parts on the edges, they actually constitute to just one atom at the center that is occupying a volume of x cube. Okay, so that is how you visualize the question, that is how you solve it. Moving on to the next part, we have uh, again, this is a question in terms of density. I will show you a trick for this as well to avoid algebra mistakes. Now, <clears throat> for uh, this question, again, we're going to go back to the since there are two liquids are being mixed, we're going to go towards the idea of uh, total density uh, that is going to be uh, total mass 
total mass divided by total volume. So that will be M1 plus M2 divided by V1 plus V2. Now, how to find the mass? We know that the density is equal to mass over volume. If you take volume on the side, we get mass equal to density multiplied by volume. So we don't know the masses individually, but we know their densities individually, and we know one of the volume that was added. So this was the volume of glycerin. You can pause the video and see the question for yourself. Try to solve it on yourself, and let's see what you get. So the total mass on both sides will be density multiplied by volume. So this will be for water, that will be 1 grams, because the density is 1. And V, volume of water, which I don't know, plus density of glycerin, which is 1.3 given, and the volume, which is 40 for the glycerin, divided by the volume of water, which I still don't know, which I want to find out, as in the question, plus 40. Now, it tells me that the total density of the whole system is supposed to be 1.1. When both of them are mixed, it is going to be 1.1. So, I place 1.1 over here. Now, here's the problem. The equation is all right. The problem is that you're going to get your, most probably, you'll lose your way around the algebra, take it over there, multiply, divide, add, subtract, you're definitely going to do a mistake. What I would suggest is, since you have this equation, put all the answers in the equation and see which one of them gives you an exact answer of 1.1. Let me show you how to do this on the calculator to save time. So we start from the fraction symbol, right? I hope that you've seen the other videos in which I show you how to make the function. I'm going to show you this one time. So this is going to be alpha x. This is the variable that we're treating as volume v plus uh, 1.3 into 40, which was the volume of that system, divided by alpha x, which was our volume, which we don't know, plus 40. Now press calc and put all the options. So if we put in 40, if we put in 40, what do we get? We are getting 1.15. So my answer should be 1.1. I should get 1.1. So in this scenario, I'm getting, let's say, for this case, I'm getting 1.15. So this can't be my answer. Let's try 44. So I press calc, press 44, press equals to, and I get 1.14. So this gives me 1.14. Again, not my answer. So reject it. Let's try and see. Calc, we have 52 equals to, equals to. This comes out as 1.13. Again, this is 1.13, not my answer. Let's try option D. Calc as 80. Now see, I get exact 1.1 when the option is D. So if you want to solve this with algebra, you will get V equals to 80. But to avoid mistakes, you can use this technique. Make the formula on the calculator and try all the options and see what happens. Okay, so last question again uh, from uh, this combined density formula. It tells you that the total mass is 750, 60% is magnesium and remainder is copper. So I would advise you to make a table for this situation. Uh, make a table for copper and make a table for magnesium. Then it will be easy to actually tabulate the data. So first we understand what is the mass, then we write down their respective density. So mass of the copper is actually 40% and six magnesium is 60% of 750. So 750 multiplied by 0 0.6 and 750 multiplied by 0 0.4. This comes out as 300 grams and this comes out as 450 grams. So now we have the total density. Now we have the total mass because for the average density of the block, we need a total mass and we need the total volume. You can always pause the video, try the question on your own, and then see the solution. So now we have 300 plus 450, although you could have written it down as 750 in a single go. But uh, for the density, uh, we know that the density uh, of copper is 9, and for the magnesium is 1.7, as given in, over here. Now we need to find out the total volume. Now for volume, we know that the density is equal to mass over volume. Take volume on the other side, density on this side. So we get V equals to mass over density. So volume in this case would be 300 divided by 9. And in this case, it will be 450 divided by 1.7. Okay. So what we're going to get in all of this situation will be something, it's going to look something like, again, use the calculator and fractions to just be done with it in one go. So this will be 750 divided by uh, 300 divided by 9 plus uh, 450 divided by 1.7. What you can do is calculate their values individually, get those answers, put them over here. That will still give you the same answer. It does not matter, okay? But I recommend generally doing the question in one go so that you can see whether you put a value incorrectly or whether you've been incorrect about something. It will surely give you the same answer. So it will be 2.52 grams per cm cube, and that is option A. You can try this on your own with the calculator. It's up to you.